Hey y'all. Um, I was just hanging out at the park with my with my girls and saw this plant that you can find all over Israel right now. And when it starts growing, it's prolific. Um, it's all over the place. And for the longest time, I ran through all the different plants in my head that this could possibly be until I finally identified it. But I want to show it to you um, right now. So just a minute. Okay. Have you ever seen this plant? For me, the shape of the leaves is so distinctive. It's just really, 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 um, they, can, they can get pretty tall. They have these kind of toothed leaves. Um, they're almost a, a bit shiny on the top. And here's the bottom, and those really deep veins, you can feel them. And they kind of grow from this main stalk like this. I'm gonna to try to hunt some more so that you can see them. Um, but this is the castor bean plant, the one that, that castor oil comes from. And um, yeah, so here's that center stalk. And I'm gonna see if I can find some more for you since this is such a small plant. Hi, you guys. Okay, so look behind me. I pulled over at the side of a highway um, because I saw this. Can you see that? It's not super high, this specimen, but it's pretty good. There's castor for you. You see it growing all over the highway. Here's another one that's a little bit higher. I would say that that's about five feet high, about as, as tall as I am. And it gets higher. It can look really tree-like. But over there, I don't know if you can see it. I'm zooming in. That's some of the prickly lettuce. There's a bonus for you. Going to flower. But anyway, um, castor, I, I just want to say it contains one of the, the most poisonous substances on earth. Here we go. Here's some more prickly lettuce. I'm trying to yell over the sound of the cars, but there you go. You can see that prickly lettuce that um, uh, Leda Meredith taught us about when she talked about the dandelion lookalikes. You can look at that dandelion lookalike video, but here's the flowers on that. Just an, an extra bonus, and there's the castor right behind it, close up. Those really distinctive leaves. Okay, so castor, whoa, hello. Um, castor. I, I'm actually in my bathing suit. <laughs> Castor contains one of the, the most deadly poisons on earth. Um, so uh, the castor oil that you get is commercially extracted castor oil. And a good rule of thumb for castor oil is to never ever take it internally. Although if you um, have certain midwives or uh, you know, maybe maybe are involved in the natural birth scene, you may know that some women do take castor internally um, in order to induce labor. Uh, I do not recommend that. I really don't. I mean, there, there would have to be a real life and death situation, and you may be causing a life or death situation as the in instances of merconium, at least anecdotally, it might have been proven scientifically as well, um, in the water are much higher for women who take castor oil to induce labor. Uh, and of course, they also have nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and a whole host of other unpleasant side effects, which you really don't want as you're walking into labor. There's um, some more castor over here. I'll tell you a little bit about it, and then I'm going to get into the again, because like I said, I'm pulled over on this little side road here. <laughs> My kids are patiently waiting. Okay, so here's, here is another one up here. Um, castor is used externally, and it's used in castor packs most often. So here we go. Here's, some, here's a small castor plant, certainly not as small as the one on our issue. Um, there, that's a little better. You can see that nice, big, main central stalk. Um, at the bottom and then it's you know splits and kind of whatever goes off from here uh, a castor infused oil um, 
I don't know if that would work. Uh, again, we're talking about externally. So I don't know if that would work way as a commercially extracted oil. Um, but castor packs are used right on top of um, any tumors or um, uh, growths, cysts, anything like that. And it can actually, or let's say has traditionally been used to dissolve those. Disclaimer, disclaimer, <laughs> no need for the sensors to take us down. We are actually, um, okay, that was a weird guy, almost got in an accident on the street. Thank God, not the street I'm on. Uh, but anyway, so, uh, right, so I'm, I'm telling you about the traditional uses of uh, castor. I'm not offering a cure or anything like that. At any rate, castor, and I'll flip this again because I found another castor. Castor, as you can see right here, um, is used to, dis to uh, traditionally to solve bone spurs. So they can be placed right over the bone spur. Some people have those in the heel or in other parts of the leg. It can be used to, uh, when people are dealing with some kind of, of liver issue that they need help with things, I'm walking through a bunch of thorns right now, um, getting into the liver, um, or liver strengthening. Uh, there's a wonderful account on Susan Bean's page about a woman who was going through cancer and part of her cancer self-care. Again, again, censors, I am recounting a story I read. Um, anyway, she would put the castor packs right over her liver. Um, externally, obviously, she would just slice herself open and start to make castor oil in her liver. Uh, and she would put those castor packs on, and she felt that that would, so she did it for many months, twice a day, and in the morning and at night. And the way that is done is by um, warming either a piece of flannel or some other material, natural material is best, or and or warming the oil, dipping the material into the into the oil so it's nice and warm um, or even you know hot but you don't want to burn yourself disclaimer disclaimer I think we're smart enough to to know that I mean if we all manage to take showers without scalding ourselves so I think you can do this too and uh, you cover it over with um, with a all the cars are looking at me like are you videotaping me no I'm on selfie cam they don't know that you cover it with some towels or plastic wrap, and um, that will keep the heat in. Do you mind turning that down? <laughs> that will keep the heat in, and you basically try to keep the, the hot oil in. Here's my very patient kids. You try to keep that, that oil on as long as you can, as long as it's warm, and once it's cooled down, then you'll either need a new caster pack or you're done. Um, so again, rule of thumb, castor oil is used externally only. It contains one of the most poisonous substances on earth. And um, if it's used externally, you, you are using the commercially extracted oil, which relieves some of those um, highly, highly poisonous qualities that you would have otherwise. I do not know if an infused oil can be used. I have no idea. If you do, leave it in the comments below and let me know what part of the caster you would use for that. Okay, thanks. Okay, so just for a little bit more fun with this, really quickly before I leave this plant, we've got the small um, part of this leaf. I think it's really just one leaf right um, at the top we've got a large one directly below it this is a really good specimen for that same here and they kind of grow through the side so we have one two three four five six seven eight now move to this one <laughs> one two three four five six seven eight nine now move to this one Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's try this one. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, yeah, a really interesting shape, but 
you know, each, each leaf kind of doing its own thing.